here is the dungeon guy video. I'm gonna go through all the dungeons and talk about uh, what they do. I'll show you what my teams are for them and um, I'll try to suggest on how you can beat them. Obviously I can't tell everyone how to beat every dungeon because I don't know what your boxes are. Um, so I'm gonna kind of make some assumptions. One is that you have Gaius, okay? Gaius is the craftable uh, Nat 5 tank. Um, if you're a newer player, uh, if you're a newer player, you probably aren't going to be able to do any of the stage six dungeons just because you're not there yet. Um, if you, you know, need a good tank, Gaius is an awesome tank and he's craftable, so you can fuse him. So I would say fusing Gaius is probably a higher priority than getting stage six dungeons. Um, if, if you don't have the tanks to do it, if you have the tanks to do it, by all means, you can sub out Gaius with someone else. Uh, there are some some specific dungeons such as Swift Steel where I think he's really clutching. Um, so they added in this new tip here, which is kind of cool, that it kind of gives you some tips about it that really is all you, for the most part, all you need to know. Uh, so we're going to start here with Iron Claw. Iron Claw, uh, there's a boss, and there's four ads. Two of the ads are these two little robots. Let's see if we can see. Yeah, these two little robots right here. You have to kill these two little robots, um, otherwise they explode, and they do a lot of AoE damage to your entire team. Um, so... I'm just going to kind of let it play on auto, but I'm not going to auto it so you guys can actually see it. Um, so on a lot of my dungeon teams, the strategy is to kill the boss with dots, right? Um, in Iron Claw, you can, you can kill the boss with dots, but dots alone are probably not going to be enough to take out these little guys right here. If you look at their skills, right, uh, they have self-detonate, which it doesn't list what the cooldown is. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the cooldown is two turns. Uh, so after two turns of them being alive, they blow up and they hurt really bad. Um, and two turns of dots means you have to have, you know, five dots on them every turn they go. Not, not five, ten dots every time they go. So, you know, 50% every time they go. It's pretty difficult to do. Um, there are some daughters out there who can do it. But clearly this dungeon is not designed for you to be with uh, dot mechanics. Um, so what you need is you need a burst damage dealer that can take out at least one of these robots. I, I've, you know, if you have a decent healer, um, typically your healer can outheal one of the one of the uh, robots, but not both of them exploding. Um, so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to target the robot and then I'm going to just target the boss. Uh, my strategy is going to be to blow up, you know, take out one of the robots so they don't both bo blow me up and then use my light kitty here to dot up the boss. Um, you can see I don't have a tank. If you look at the guys I'm using, I have a water-based hero. I have another water-based hero, so they're not gonna get targeted. Um, I have a light-based uh, daughter right here, but he has a special skill on him. Let me show you. He has hide from danger, so whenever he takes damage, he goes stealth, which he actually does more dots when he's stealth, so I kinda want him to take a little bit of damage and go stealth. Um, so most of the damage is going to be going on to my high C. Um, and she has decent enough equipment that she can survive it. Uh, so the, the strategy here is you don't really need a tank if you can redirect damage to someone that's moderately beefy. Um, they don't have to be, I mean you can see I have her running only double HP, right? Um, so she has crit multiplier on her gloves. So you don't even need a huge bruiser to take the damage here. There's not a lot of single target damage that goes out. Most of the damage is uh, the AoE from the two guys. Um, so you can get away with not using a tank on this one if you wanted to, to, to put more damage out. The idea is this is a, a DPS race. You have to blow up these guys before they blow you up. Um, so without further ado, let's see it. Um, you can very similarly uh, swap out the high C with any, you know, any non- water healer um that's that has you know enough survivability that they don't get killed you know if you throw a five star healer in there taking damage they're probably not going to survive you know so that's what i mean by enough survivability uh, so as far as gear um i got swift steel on the kitty swift steel on my high c uh, War Tech on, um, uh, what is Sir, I forget, Sir, sir something. <laughs> I mean, the Water Buffalo. 
Um, I got War Tech, or not War Tech, I got a uh, Witch Stone on him, and then I got War Tech on my Junk Maw. So again, my Junk Maw is doing burst damage, my Kitty is doing dots, and my High C, as you can see, is sort of heal slash tank. And what really helps this is the, uh, the, the Water Cow here, you know, he gives that attack and speed buff, which helps me put out more dots and more damage in between the phases uh, that um, those uh, explodey guys, explodey ads, these little tiny robots you're seeing, these little guys. You know, the more turns I have in between them, it's better. Yeah, yeah, Max has the right idea. Swift Steel everything. Swift Steel is such a good set now. I need to go back and... Uh, you know, put an amendum onto my how to gear stuff that's like Swift Steel everyone. <laughs> there are some good things that are some guys that don't need Swift Steel. Like I would say uh, Jung Ma doesn't really need Swift Steel. Um, any, anyone that has a a nuke on their A2 or A3 and that's where they shine or anyone that has like a uh, uh, an AoE attack and that's where you're trying to get your damage from. Uh, they don't need, they, they can still work in Swift Steel, but they don't really need Swift Steel, if that makes sense. Um, did you see my post on itemization today? No, I didn't, Max. Uh, I haven't, I've actually been uh, in town shopping all day with my wife, <laughs> so I didn't see much of nothing. So there you go. Um, as you saw, you know, I used Jung Ma to take out one of the robots, and then before the robots even came back up, my kitty dotted up the boss enough to kill the boss. Um, so, that's how you do Iron Claw, or that's how you can do Iron Claw. Um, you don't necessarily need a healer, what you could do is go with a stronger heal. So High C doesn't really do um, strong heal, she does, you know, sustained healing, um, meaning she heals often, but she doesn't heal for a lot. If you if you were to throw in a really strong healer, like I have a Nat now, I could probably throw in a Nat in that spot. Um, and then I wouldn't need to dot, use dots on the boss. I could use another single target damage dealer or just another non-dot based damage dealer um, to help uh, ensure that I kill those robots. Um, what I mean is I can, I can replace, come on look, I can replace this kitty with someone like a uh, Kamian or something like that. Um, although, you know, he would take some damage, so I'd probably want to use a water one. I could, hey, I could use, well, he's leveling up right now, but I could use him. Um, yeah, do something like that instead of, and I would have to replace uh, High C with a stronger healer. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, going on to Swift Steel. So let's see if they updated this. Um, I hoped, you know, I uh, was chiming in. Someone on the forums noted that if you look under this boss's abilities, it doesn't say he's immune to dots. But he, okay, they fixed it. Good, good, good. They updated it in the last update. So he is immune to damage over time. That means all of your strategies involving dots go out the window, right? Because um, he, he doesn't take dot damage. That being said, he is a very easy boss if you have guys. Um, his main thing that he does, and what it says in the tips, it says that he puts a prey debuff. Where is it? Here we go. Mark of prey. Um, whenever the, the round with the boss starts, um, he puts a prey debuff on a random uh, one of your guys, so one of your random heroes. And that is basically like a permanent taunt. And they take extra damage, right? Um, so, and then if any of your guys cast taunt or uh, provoke, they, they take the prey debuff. Um, so, before I got Gaius, I had problems where I was using, like, uh, uh, this guy here, I was using uh, Gwen. And his taunt, because I don't have it split up, would be off cool, or would be on cooldown. Uh, whenever I started, so like one of my DPS would get the prey debuff and would die before he would taunt and take the prey debuff away. Gaius starts each round, assuming he's awakened, he will start each round with taunt, thanks to this cool little skill here. So that means he automatically gets the prey debuff, he's always going to get targeted, he's going to take all the damage. You could seriously do it like this and probably win. <laughs> the only reason you have a DPS in there is to speed it up. Use Gaius, two healers, and a DPS and you win. Like it's it's, it's really uh, one of the easiest bosses whenever you have guys and I'll just kind of I'll give it a play to show you how it works out. Um, if you wanted to you could take out some of the heads um, if your guys is in if you don't have the gear for your guys to be uh, uh, tanky enough to take the hits 
because uh, his, his heads do some extra damage and some debuffs and stuff like that. Yeah, lots of fun. So if your two healers can't keep up with the damage that Gaius is taking, um, then by all means you can target one of the heads first. Um, but if your Gaius is tanky enough and your healers can heal him, uh, then there's no reason you can't just go straight for the boss himself. So you can see my two healers here are High C and Marigold, uh, two of arguably the best healers in the game. You have a low healing output but continually healing hero combined with a high healing output with cooldowns. Uh, so High C is always healing for a small amount. Marigold burst heals for a large amount but then has periods where she can't heal. Put the two together and everything loads. It's great. The only thing this team doesn't have is cleanses right um but that's uh, you know you could replace marigold here with the blue fairy uh really you could replace these two healers with anyone it went if your Gaius is tanky enough it doesn't matter who you put there you, you know you, two healers is enough to keep a, a good Gaius alive any two healers um but say you don't have a Gaius artifact and you need cleanses you could easily swap in any of the spell weavers um are not spell weavers, so if they are the the Anats, Diana, that class, pretty sure they're spell weavers. The ones that heal and cleanse. Well cleanse and do other things. So here you can see my guys has the prey debuff. Uh, so no matter what, there's gonna be some AoE damage that goes out, but it's really not that bad. Um, and guys is gonna take all the damage and my two healers are gonna heal and we're gonna kill the boss. See, that's the great thing about Gaius once you have the artifact on him too, is you give himself immunity. So he doesn't have to worry about the dots or anything. So um, one of the heads does do dots, as you can see my guys are getting dots. So that's the AoE damage that goes out. Um, you can either heal through it or you can bring, like I said, bring a cleanser as one of your healers. Also, if you wanted to make this safer, you could replace Jung Ma with uh, Petra. Uh, Petra would do great damage to this boss. And he would provide the shield, which would further help your guys survive. So as you can see, none of my guys are even close to dying. Nothing's risky about this. It's a very safe, very easy team. And honestly, now that see, I made this team before I had a gnat. Now that I have a gnat, I could probably swap out um, probably Marigold. I could swap out one of these two for a gnat and probably solo heal this. I would not be surprised. Um, but you know, I already have a team that works. So if it ain't broke, why fix it? Alright, so there's Switch Steel. Alright, so let's move on to Life Silk. Um, so Life Silk, the boss heals, right? Um, well, the boss doesn't heal. The little minions that the boss has heal the boss every time they move. And on top of that, after, I think it's every four turns, let's see, there it is, every five turns. So every five turns, if there's any of the little minions, the two minions alive, the boss will suck them in and heal by like, I want to say 25% of his life uh, for every one of those bosses that it sucks in. Um, so the idea is, one, you can try to DPS those bosses on the, or the mini bosses on the side, those little ads. Or the much more realistic, and the way they really want you to do this, is you just bring a heal blocker. Um, so on my team, I have the same healing situation um, that we saw in the last dungeon. You know, I have two healers, right? Um, you don't need a cleanser for this at all, so 
bring two healers, bring a daughter, or any damage dealer that can do good damage to the boss, and most importantly, bring a heal blocker. Um, I don't have a damage dealer that can also heal block. There are, you know, a few out there to choose from. Um, but the, you need a consistent heal block, and you need, uh, that, that's, that's really the, the key to this dungeon. If you can have a consistent heal blocker, you're good. Um, so I'm using, not even a six star, a five star Celia, a shield maiden, right? Um, she's running all block gear, because she has built in, so she doesn't even have good gear, like, not even level it up, blah, blah, blah. It's fire going against nature, so she can survive a little bit better, plus I'm using two healers to keep her alive. The strategy here is you heal block the boss, and then you either blow him up, or you dot him up and he dies from dots. I'm choosing the dot option, uh, just because, uh, a Mido on Swift Steel is ridiculous, so... That's what I, I chose to go with. Um, the, the Fire Shield Maiden is a great choice for this boss because she provides a lot of utility in that. Um, she does team buffs, team speed buff. Uh, she taunts, so she tanks. Um, and she also does counter attacks and heal blocks on her A1. Uh, so as she's taunting and taking damage, she counter attacks, which puts a heal block on. And then whenever she uses her A1, she also, you know, uh, 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 heal blocks. If you wanted to make this more reliable, what you could do is put Swift Steel on her so that she does her A1 more often. Because there'll be times, you'll, you'll see, she's probably going to do at least one. She'll like cast the team buff like she just did. Um, and she won't use her A1 to heal block the boss. And then the boss will suck in the ads and heal. Um, so to prevent that, what you can do is, you know, put Swift Steel on her. And then she's always going to be healing too. So, or always going to be heal blocking. Not always, but like a 40% chance to heal block after she taunts, which is pretty huge. So look at all the dots. Mido is great. I would say. All of the uh, assassin kitties are, are really good daughters. Um, the nature one, probably a little bit better than the rest because it's a lead dot. Um, so it affects the entire enemy team, which makes it much more versatile. But all the cats are great at dotting because um, they, they do this, this uh, multi hit A1 that can dot. And they all have the same A1. So it doesn't matter which cat you use for most of these dungeons, the end result is going to be the same. Put dots on the boss, dot it up, win. So there we go, I still haven't heal blocked the boss yet. There we go, there's the heal block on the boss. So there's the counter attack heal block on the boss. The boss sucked in the ads, but guess what? There are no ads, so too bad for you, boss. And now right there, that's four dots, which is 20% of the boss's life. <laughs> gonna go down quick uh, I have no clue what the uh, the dungeons gonna be next week it'll, it'll be interesting to see I hope that has a stage seven though. Um, I really like them adding in that stage seven they seem to like stage six felt about on par with these stage sixes and stage seven was actually a challenge that had good rewards so hopefully they do that I'll talk about it a little bit, or we'll, we'll look at it and try to figure it out, Max, uh, after I finish this. Alright, so now we're on to War Tech. Alright, so the key to War Tech is multi-hit. There's also some other things, that, so they tell you to bring a multi-hit to get to the evasion. Um, the way this works, every turn that Tachimura goes, he does this, uh, where is it, there, the slither, which gives an evade buff. It's like a four evade buff, too. It's a pretty significant evade buff. Um, and then on top of that, you have his little arms, not that one, this one here. His arm puts out a speed bump, and then he also gives enrage to all of his buddies. So, he's going fast, his other arm I'm pretty sure slows you. I think this one slows. Yeah, so single target slow. Um, <laughs> so he slows you down, speeds himself up, enrages him and his friends, and puts on evasion, right? Um, so he's kind of a hard boss 
whenever you're first getting into the pushing four sixes. Um, but once you overcome him, he's probably one of the more consistently beatable bosses. Um, the way you beat him is you use multi-hitters. So all of the fairies are really good against him. Um, all of the samurai kitties are really good against them because they do, uh, you know, uh, their A1s have multi-hits on them. Um, you can swap out Marigold, honestly, for, you know, the, the water one if you wanted. Uh, really, use things that have a multi-hitting A1. So you can see here, I have my Gaius as my tank, right? He's going to take all the damage. I have my Marigold to multi-hit and to heal. I have my DPS, who's a daughter DPS, and he's a multi-hitter, so we have two multi-hitters. And then I'm also using a second healer, my Pyrus. Uh, Pyrus has a team attack where he calls everyone to go attack, and since two of my team members have multi-hits on their first skill, that's going to help uh, take down that evasion even quicker. Um, so again, my strategy here is to uh, take down the shield, or take down the evasion by using my multi-hits, and then put as many dots on the boss as I can, and he's gonna die from the dots. Uh, you can do the same thing without dots if you just have good enough damage, uh, but the key here is just multi. I, I used to use Jung Ma on this. Uh, my old team used to be, uh, I think I used Gwen, Jung Ma, and uh, two fairies. So something like that would work too. Um, and to deal with the speed and slow thing, um, you can also use the water cow as Sir Silvus. Aha! Sir Silvus is the water uh, minotaur, also known as the water buffalo. And uh, you can use Sir Silvus as uh, to give you a speed buff to kind of counteract his speed buff so that you know you both have buff speeds. Um, you can use a water DPS, and then you can use two fairies to you know, drop his evasion. That's another way you can get another strategy. But the, the thing is, you know, that's probably a more earlier strategy, um, you know, until you get some of these other heroes. I think that was my very first poor tech team, now that I think about it. I had to, I tried to use just Gwen to taunt, or to tank, and it ended up being not, like, fast enough. He would constantly have his evasion buff up because his speed buff. Uh, so that's why I switched and uh, used uh, Sir Silvis to help give myself a speed buff so that I could you know, keep up with him. And you're going to see with this team, um, there's enough going on that I'm able to keep up with his evasion. So, so, so five stacks of evasion, lots lots of evasion. Oh, wow, seven stacks. Maybe it's seven whenever he first puts it on. So you can see I'm like barely able to put a few dots on him every round. But Gaius is such a good tank that, it, yeah, this, this is fine. Like, this can go. It's okay. Okay, I, I put a lot of dots on him that round. <laughs> I bet it's because my artist did his team attack thing. Also, having your multi hitters on Switch Steel helps even better for this. Oh, okay, so depending on what floor you're on, there's, you get more stacks of evasion. So there's more stacks of evasion on this one because it's 4 6. If you were on 4 4 or something like that, there would be less stacks. Thanks for that, Icky. So, there you go. That's... Ooh, I'll keep that. Um, so, that's how you beat the War Tech boss. You use multi-hitters, you use Swiss Steel, and you're golden. Alright, so now we got Witchstone. Um, Witchstone has this thing where whenever the... Uh, I wonder what my... Oh, you know what? I bet it was Petra. I think I used Petra as my other one. So whenever you kill the tentacles, um, the boss becomes stronger. By stronger, they mean that the boss does dots. So if you look at the boss's abilities, uh, which one? This one. He says, if a tentacle dies, at the beginning of each turn, he does one damage every time to all enemies, right? So if both tentacles are down, then he does two dots every round. Guess what? Throw in a spell weaver that can cleanse those dots. Throw in anything that can cleanse those dots. Throw in someone with immunity. 
like, you know, I thought oh, maybe it was Silas that I used to use. Um, throw in anything that can cleanse, remove, uh, you know, prevent those dots, and, and you're good. If you have Spike for that one, he's amazing. Who's Spike? I'm not quite sure who Spike is. Um, but so if you look at what the boss's tentacles do, this one permanently guards him. Um, so no matter what, you're going to end up killing this one first. And then this one gives a shield every round. Um, typically what you can do here is you can just target the uh, boss. And um, what will happen is you're, uh, you'll have to kill this tentacle because it's being guarded. The boss is being guarded by that tentacle. And then you can just kind of ignore this other one and damage through it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, if, if, if you had enough cleansing and debuff immunity, you could just take out the right tentacle, then the left tentacle, then the boss. Of course, you'd have to run into enrage timers and stuff, so it's up to you. Um, again, I'm going to use uh, dots for my damage. I could also use... Let me make sure he's not... I, I'm pretty sure he's not immune to... Uh, yeah, it doesn't say he's immune to anything, which I don't think you can sleep him, so I'm pretty sure he's immune to that, but anyways... So I'm using dots for damage here. Gaius is tanking, and then I have a healer. Just you know, my high C is sort of my go-to healer for persistent heals. Um, and then I have a gnat is going to cleanse those dots that we're going to get. Uh, oh, order nomad. Yeah. So all the nomads are really good for uh, for the the, the war tech dungeon. See, when I had to formulate a stage 16, <laughs> these nomads didn't exist. I think they specifically put them in to help people with war tech. Um, they do a multi-hit on their A1, right? Their first skill. And they also have that whole... Uh, oh, I, I forget what, what the name of the ability is. It's not guard, but it's similar to guard. They cast it on someone, and whenever that person takes damage, they counterattack, right? Um, so instead of taking damage for an ally, they counterattack. Revenge. Thank you, Inky. So they have the revenge uh, ability that does damage whenever their uh, protected or their targeted friend gets attacked. Um, and they do it with their A1, which is a multi-hit. With their artifact, they automatically put that on the start of each turn on someone, a uh, defense type hero. So you have a tank, you have a nomad, and that's really all you need. Because whenever your tank takes damage, your nomad's going to use that revenge ability to hit the boss and probably almost instantly remove his stacks. Now get this, if you have Swift Steel on your Nomad, your Nomad can actually prop Swift Steel with Revenge. I've seen it happen in the arena and it is annoying as shit. Okay, Revenge should not proc Swift Steel, but it does. Okay, so you know what, if, if that's the way it's gonna be, that's fine, we can just learn to play around it. And it's great for War Tech because that means you're doing like eight hits, which is enough to completely remove the evasion on one Revenge prop. Like, it, it, that's, that's sick, right? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, nomads are great. As long as they have that revenge skill, nomads are great for uh, for war tech. And and put it, put you know put your nomad on switch too. Any anyone that has a any, if you're using a hero for their A1 skill, put them on switch too. <laughs> that's like. Or if they have no reason to, to um, hit harder on their A2 or A3, put them on Swift Steel, you know? Swift Steel is like almost always a good uh, choice. Oh yeah, and the, uh, the, the Order Nomad strips buffs as well. I actually have an Order Nomad. Um, he's five stars waiting for me to use him for something. <laughs> I just haven't... I don't need him for anything yet. I, I kind of want to do a Gaius Arena team with him in it because it's very, very annoying. Um, but yeah. So that you just saw Witchstone, like, it went really fast. Uh, as long as you can cleanse those dots. You saw at the end, he was dotting me up. But Anat just blew through those dots like it's nothing. So as long as you can deal with those dots, um, it's, it's no big deal. You know, it, really, Witchstone is, is one of the easier dungeons. Um, especially with the Gaius. Like, you know, water is weak to nature, and since Gaius starts off with a taunt, you don't have to worry about his taunt being off cooldown. Whenever you start the boss wave, run your Gaius in there. He's going to tank everything to the face. Target the boss, take him out. 
you know, you, if you kill some tentacles, you're gonna kill at least one tentacle in the way, so you, you're gonna kill some tentacles. Uh, cleanse the debuffs, cleanse the dots, you're good. Alright, so Titan Guard. Uh, Titan Guard was the one that I was actually stuck on for the longest time. Um, and then they released these dot machines over here, which allowed me to actually kill him before he does a re So he does a bomb, so you have to have a cleanse. And if you look at the description, it says, Oh, you gotta remove the bomb, you know, if you wanna survive. So I was like, okay, I'll bring a cleanser, no problem. Well, it turns out the boss does a really strong AOE attack. Let me see if I can find the name of it here. Uh, where is it? There you go. Lash Out. Lash Out does a crap ton of damage. They don't say this anywhere in the hints for this boss, but it does a ton of that, enough so that it was wiping my team. Uh, but this is also before I had guys. Uh, it was wiping my team before I got the heroes that I have now. Um, so, and actually, I don't even need. I can, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just use the team that I had here. I'll, I'll use a map. Maybe more people have a map. Probably more people have a map than names. But you need a cleanser no matter what, because the bombs will one shot whoever they're on. Um, instead of Gaius, another cool option for this boss is. Uh, Giles. Giles has this passive that he removes a buff every round. If he goes with only a bomb on him, he'll actually put the bomb onto one of the boss's tentacles, which is really cool. Um, but you need your guys to survive that AoE hit, and that AoE hit is hard enough. It's probably going to take out. It's going to take out any five star you have um, that's not built with really good gear, and it might even take out some squishier six star DPS heroes. Um, so that's one of the reasons why um, I'm bringing this kitty cat is because I have pretty decent, you know, not great, but decent survivability on him. If you don't have, you know, double HP, you know, if you're going like power HP, crit multiplier or something like that on a DPS hero, you're not going to survive the boss's AoE hits. Um, so you need a hero or a daughter or a DPS that can survive. He used to kill my kitty. so. Let me show you. Uh, my saber tooth cat has 5,000, you know, and 5,000 HP, 1,800 armor, right? And let's look at Samurai Kitty. Has what? Close to about 8,000, and so so same armor, but I have you know a good bit more HP, so he can survive. Uh, my uh, order saber tooth could not survive his AOE hits before. Um, so if you can survive the AOE and you bring a cleanser, um, then then you're, you're you're good to go right there. But surviving the AOE is a lot harder than you would think it would be. Um, but you have to have a cleanser for the bombs. Again, you know, if if you look at what my teams are, I think I use the Nature Cat. So I use Dots and I use Gaius in all but two of of the dungeons. So. Using Dots and using Gaius as a tank is a, a you know, can't be understated how uh, useful that strategy is. Um, and that's why I started this video with saying, if you're new and you're trying to get into stage 6 dungeons and you don't have Gaius, go, go get him. Like, what are you doing? Go get Gaius. He, you can craft him. Get the guys you need, fuse them together, you know, say goodbye and get yourself an amazing tank. You're going to use him in almost every one of these dungeons. I don't use them in Iron, with a, uh, uh, yeah, the Iron Claw dungeon because I don't even use a tank in Iron Claw, but in every other one I use. Ah, uh, see that Nature Kitty. Look at him go, AOE dotting everything. If I used one of the other elements, like if I used Fire Kitty instead or something like that, um, he would still be just as good. In fact, most people used to use one of the Saber Tooths before they released these Samurai Cats, right? Kitties used to refer to Saber Tooths. Now they refer to Samurai Cats. The Samurai Cats are better. Um, but you could very easily use one of the Saber Tooths instead of the Samurai Cat if you don't have one yet. But it really doesn't matter. The Nature one is good because it's the... the See, that was the damage I was talking about. That AoE hits really strong. Um, but due to the nature of uh, you know the AoE dots, they just speed up 
whenever you have multiple targets because everyone's getting dotted at once. Whereas if I had a single target dot, it would be you die, then you, then you, then you. Instead, everyone just kind of dies at once. So as far as how successful the runs are, there's going to be very little difference. It's just going to be faster if you use an AoE daughter like the Nature Kitty. So there we go. That's how you do the Titan Guard dungeon. Okay, that's how I do the Titan Guard dungeon. How you do it is going to depend on what you have. Um, but common theme, again, if you don't have Gaius, go get Gaius. Uh, if you see a nature kitty, hold on to him. If you see any of the samurai cats, hold on to him. If you're not lucky enough to get a samurai cat, don't fret. Build a saber tooth. Build him to five star, okay? And see what you can do with them. The, sa the, the, the saber tooths are good because they have the stealth ability, which reduces the damage they take. Um, and in a lot of dungeons, that's enough to have them survive AoE ambient damage um, and enough to dot the boss. Just remember, you cannot dot the Swift Steel boss, so you'll have to use direct damage on that. And the Iron Claw, you know, you have to, it's a DPS race. Uh, so dots aren't enough to overcome that DPS race that you need to kill those bombs. Alright, well that concludes the how to do dungeon tutorial. Um, so yeah, and, and as Icky just pointed out, the artifact for the Sabertooths also caused the dots to crit, which makes them do extra damage, so even better for those Sabertooths. Uh, so yeah, if you're building your first dungeon, A, get a Gaius. Second, build a daughter. Third, build the heals that you need. Well, I guess if you don't have the heals, then the daughters don't matter, but you, that, that's the sort of strategy you're going for. You know, a good tank, good daughters, uh, good healers, uh, you need a cleanser for two of the dungeons, and um, and then from there it's kind of working with what you got uh, to, to overcome the ups and downs of the different dungeons I've been talking about. Alright, well I hope everyone enjoyed that tutorial. This will be up on YouTube, so everyone enjoy!